everyone, Backyard Farmer Pat here. Today we're gonna do a full garden tour of my, but we're gonna focus on the veggies and the herbs. So usually I do like a garden tour, I go through all my fruit trees, but today I wanna spend some time on these potted plants. I want you guys to realize that how easy it is to grow all a whole bunch of different fruits and vegetables and herbs in pots. You don't have to have a large space. You don't have to have plant them in the ground. Just about everything I have in this small garden and you're gonna see how abundant, abundant it is. Most of the stuff are grown in pots. So come on, let, let me show you everything I have grown in my pots. So first, I have my beautiful arch here uh, that I grew in a pot. I have my passion fruit vine. And you see the vine started off like a six inch vine like about six months ago and now look how big it is. As a matter of fact, I've been hand pollinating and if you, ha if you haven't checked it out, Check out the video I posted a few days ago on hand pollinating um, passion fruit. Um, the passion fruit has male and female parts and the pollen is on the male part if you come closer. The pollen is on the male part. So the pollen has to go from the male petals to the female petals in order for it to be pollinated. And as you can see, it's very difficult um, to get pollinated. So I usually hand pollinate those, but go ahead and check it out on how I get the pollen from here and I get it here. But I'll, I'll do that one later. But let's come on, let's see what, what else we have. So I have my purple sweet potatoes that have been in, in the bed, in the ground for a while. As a matter of fact, I think they're re really ready to harvest. So I'm gonna post a video pretty soon about how I harvest this bed. And here we have callaloo. And this is a volunteer. I didn't plant this callaloo. I, oh, there's a horrible fly. I didn't plant this callaloo, this actually popped up, but you can see it's completely on the seed. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna let the callaloo seeds stay. These are almost dry. And then of course, from, the, from these seeds, I'm gonna be able to plant a whole, several beds of callaloo just from these seeds that popped up. Uh, what else do we have here? So we have some bok chow that, some seedlings that I did a few, like uh, I guess about six weeks ago. They're coming up. Um, I don't expect them to get much bigger because it's already getting hot. So I do have some bok chow under here. All right, and over here we have some lemongrass that little Miss Stormy was just nibbling on. Lemongrass, in Jamaica we also call it fever grass. This is so good for you. This is another really awesome thing. It's good for, it's called fever grass because it's good for fevers. It's, it's actually, I, I just realized it's actually really good if you're like frying fish and you don't want the place to get smelly. You just cut some lemongrass and add it to a pot of water and let the water boil up and you won't even smell the fish. So that's like a wonderful thing I found out a couple years ago. Also, if you leave it on your patio area, it actually repels mosquitoes also. So it's really good. Plus a whole bunch of other things. Plus it tastes super good. Um, so over here, let's look at our peppers. So you guys know, this was the first time I was planting um, purple scotch bonnet pepper. I can tell you the aphids were a battle. Um, I posted a video on how to battle aphids using um, neem oil. It, it, it really didn't work. I had to end up using neem oil mixed with one teaspoon of baking soda and um, a little and a teaspoon of vinegar and mix that in water. And that's what actually got rid of the, the um, aphids. So the aphids are gone now. I have several more blossoms coming out. And I have my very first purple scotch bonnet. I'm super excited about this. I'm gonna be saving every last seed so I can plant some more. And here are my regular scotch bonnets. I haven't been able to get out much for the past few weeks, so a lot of things have gotten ripe. So we're just gonna go ahead and harvest as we go along. This is the last of my scotch bonnets. These are the traditional scotch bonnets that everybody knows about. You can see it looks like a little bonnet. The, the shape is why they call it a scotch bonnet. Then here, oh my goodness guys, look at this. This is my kachucha pepper. I finally found out the name. I wasn't sure what they were. They're called kachucha. The flavor is very intense, very incredible. It's very fragrant, just like a scotch bonnet. So when I Google it, it turns out they are in the same family as scotch bonnet. So I am I'm way overdue with harvesting these beautiful peppers. Look at this, guys. These are so beautiful. The tree is literally laden. So what I do is, um, I'm gonna probably put some of these in an escovish sauce. Um, escovish sauce is a sauce that we, we Jamaicans love to eat on our fried fish. 
you, you cut up, you slice up some peppers with some onions and um, some carrots, chocho, or chayote squash. You slice them all up and have them marinated in, in a vinaigrette. Oh, look at how many peppers I have, guys. These are in a bag. All of these are in bags. You can grow these in a container. You can grow these in a pot. You can grow these in a bag. But look, you don't have to have a big space. You can have this beautiful pepper tree on your patio. Wow. All this from one tree. One tree in a bag. You can have all these. Literally, um, another thing I usually do with my peppers, because these peppers are super spicy. They're like Scotch bonnets. Very fragrant, but very spicy. So I can never use a whole one. I just have like, use like tiny slivers each time I cook. Or if I'm making soup, I can put the whole one in the soup, but I, I make sure to take it out before it bursts because if it bursts, it's, it's that crazy. So let me finish harvesting these peppers and then we'll move on to the next plant. I'm only picking the ripe ones. There are some that are partially ripe. I'm gonna leave those on. But guys, oh my gosh, I think I got all the ripe ones. Look at this, look at this guys. This is off one tree one pepper tree and in the same bag look what I have to the side but I can tell some caterpillars or something got it look what I have guys this little tiny tree here is a jalapeno tree so I have jalapeno it's this tiny but I've already got like three jalapenos off it and I see like three or four more so we're gonna pick this jalapeno look at that beautiful Right beside it, I have my turmeric. And here I have two more cachucha peppers. So the same peppers as these. I, these are, I started from seed when I started the other seeds, um, woo, like about six weeks ago. So these two, I'm gonna probably transplant. I, I probably just leave them right there. All right, so on the back row, I have my naysberry seed. And this is from my brother's tree. Um, I ate a naysberry, it was delicious. And I have that growing. Over here, in a very small, it's, it's like a window box. I have oregano and rosemary. I have them all in the same box, and you can see how, how much it is. Here's a tip I wanna give you guys regarding things like rosemary, oregano, thyme. Always, never cut, when you're cutting, don't cut from the root. Cut from the top. Like, you see, that, act like you're giving it a, a trim. Each time you trim it, it grows back even thicker and even better. So always trim it so it gets even fuller. That's why my oregano is so full right now. Down here I have my sage, which I actually, I'm cooking some chicken right now with sage and oregano from the garden. Sage is absolutely delicious. This has been here for several months now and it's still very full. I keep cutting it back and it keeps growing. It's wonderful. Then right above it, I have my mint and my green onions and my and my garlic chives. And then when I get to the other side, I'll show you what else I have. Um, about the mint, the mint had grown so much, it was literally touching the ground. So what I did was I cut pieces of mint off. Um, I have at least seven or eight friends who came over in the past few weeks just to get clippings from my garden. The wonderful thing about mint is that everywhere it touches the ground, everywhere there, there's a joint, it will grow roots and will grow, it will grow mint. So I actually gave away a ton of mint recently and plus I cut some pieces and stuck them in another pot right beside my squash and I'll show that, show that to you. But it's very easy. You just break any piece, stick it in the ground and you can have mint plants to give, give away a chair. All right, so here are some of the seedlings that I planted, the tomato seedlings. And as you can see, in just a few weeks, they have gotten very big. The, these are already have a lot of blossoms on it. Already have tomatoes coming out. I believe that these are cherry tomatoes. Um, or, yeah, these are cherry tomatoes. Right beside it is another one, another seedling. And guys, when you think about it, this cost less than a penny. This was like a, a dollar, two dollar pack that had hundreds of seeds. Each of these is one seed, and I'm gonna be getting a whole bunch of, of tomatoes from here. So I have my tomatoes. I have actually one in each pot. And then this. This is a surprise, another volunteer. So you guys remember I had my um, my Malabar spinach and when I, dug, when I dug it up to discard it after I collected all the seeds, some seeds fell. So I have 
three, I had about eight or nine, but I gave away several. So now I have like three Malabar spinach. And this is just weeks old. But look how much how much it has grown. And I can tell you within, it grew from here to here in Mobley, maybe two weeks. So I can tell you pretty soon I'm gonna have to have something for the trellis on. And these leaves are gonna be massive. And then I'll show you guys as that time comes on. Here we have some more of the tomato seedlings. You can see they all look very healthy. They all look beautiful. They have blossoms. They have tomatoes, lots of tomatoes coming out on it. So these are all doing very well. I'm gonna be getting a whole bunch of tomatoes, different kinds of tomatoes based on what I planted. And then here is, um, I need some advice. So all of you experts out there, Diva Jones 03, AA Home Gardener, Jamaica Agribus number one, um, Angie's home, home, Angie's Busy Bee Garden. All you experts out there need help. So I planted my sugar kiss cantaloupe, which I absolutely love. Um, I got it from Home Depot. It was delicious. I planted some of the seeds and it was big and healthy. I actually had three or four fully formed cantaloupe on there. Then it started wilting from the top and it's just traveling down. And so I'm going to pull this out and discard it but I wanted to show you guys first to see if somebody one of my expert friends out there that subscribe I want to make see if you guys can tell me what this is I google online and I saw there's something called bacterial bacterial wilt that affects these kind of plants like cucumbers cantaloupes melons it affects that so that's what I think it is but you guys can let me know um, the plant looked beautiful it was very healthy but you know it just started wilting it's not um, it's not the, the, the thing that bores from the bottom. It, start, it literally started from the top wilting and it's going all the way down. Um, I, wanted to, I didn't want to dig it up until I showed it, but I believe it's bacterial wilt. And from what I understand, it, there's no cure for it. You basically have to remove the plants. So right beside it, I have, you know, you guys know I like to use the same pot and have multiple things in there. So here is a mint that I told you that I broke from the end of the mint up there. I just tuck little tiny pieces all around the pot and you can see it's already taken off. All of these were just little pieces of the mint that I broke up and um, stuck in the pot. This barely had any leaves. You can see it's already covered with leaves. So I'm gonna have a ton of mint in this pot. I'll probably figure out, you guys can give me advice. What I probably do is take this one out and then find something that is, that is not susceptible to bacterial wilt. I'll find something else to replace this with. All right, so let's see what else I can harvest over here. So on this side, I have, these are all from cuttings. So this is, oh my gosh, hey. So this is my gardenia. I just broke a little branch of my brother's tree last year. But look guys, it look, it's actually budding. So this is a cutting that I broke off a gardenia last summer and it grew sub substantially but now i actually will have guardians this one look like it's about a bud and then these two are angel trumpet lilies which are also flowering plants i didn't expect them to grow this much in this little pot um i will transfer them to other pots or transfer them to the garden but these are absolutely beautiful and here's another way of getting free things right i'm gonna do a video soon jamaica agribus number one he is the boss he's a bomb he has a video where he did cuttings on cherry trees, um, uh, wait, cherry trees, Ethiopia apple trees, um, I think he did pongana trees, I can't remember, or guava trees, but he actually takes cuttings and he has like hundreds of trees growing all from cuttings, things that I didn't even know was possible. So check out Jamaica Agribos number one, he's really good. He does cutting on fruit trees, which I'm going to do very soon. But here I want to show you how I did cuttings on my, these are ornamental plants because I also love flowers. I love my fruits, but I love my flowers. To me, it's beautiful when you see fruits and flowers in the same garden. Fruits in themselves or, or these things in themselves, fruits and herbs in themselves are beautiful. But if you can have fruits and flowers, wonderful. So over here, I have um, a mango tree. It's a Julie Bombay mango. So a lot of you Jamaicans out there, or island people, we know the Julie mango and we know the Bombay mango. So this is a combination tree that someone gave me. Um, here I have a, a pear for my, my husband's um, aunt, and it's called it, or avocado. 
I call it um, Aunt Gurley's avocado because Aunt Gurley's my, my husband's um, aunt's name. And then this is a long neck, neck pair. It's all doing very well. Um, I, you guys saw them like they were like a, a foot tall when I, I got them or eight inches a foot. So they've grown significantly in the past few months. And then look here, guys. Look here. So I decided to drop some beans. You know, I like to use every inch of my garden. So I had a few areas that were empty that didn't have any plants in them. So I dropped a pea in each of these. And look, look, now I have beans to harvest. So let me put this down and harvest my beans. The wonderful thing about string beans, guys, is that they're literally ready from seed to harvest within maybe four to five days, if that much. So all of these can be harvested. When you get them from the garden, you can literally just eat them straight from the garden. It's so nice when you get them straight out of the garden. It's always nice to get them when they're this size. You don't want to get them when they're too thick or dry because then they become a lot harder to, to eat. So this was a, a bean that I added just the other day. And now I have string beans to add. Another secret to know about string beans is that the more you harvest, the more that you bear. So you don't want to ever let, leave the, let the string beans stay on the, uh, on the vine too long, on the bush too long. So these are bush beans. Ooh, this is quite a bit. Look at this tiny. Guys, look how tiny this is. Look how tiny this thing is. It's maybe 30 days old, maybe 40, probably 40 days old. And I got all these, wow. I got all these beans, guys, of one little bush that I just planted just the other day. Look at that. And here's another one. And you can see it's a very small space. I just stuck one in there. I put a little string to try and tie it up because this one actually broke, but it looked like it still did okay. All right, so I got my beans, got my beans. So every little space, every little space, you can put your string beans. So now that I picked these, it's gonna blossom again and I'm gonna have more beans. Right beside here is another seed I just plant, um, planted. It's a uh, red pepper, bell pepper. Cause I realized, hey, I have everything. I have all these spicy peppers and I love bell peppers. I cook with it like every day. So I just planted a seed from a bell pepper that I got from the store and it's already sprouted. Then here, guys, look at this. I'm so proud of my thyme. I am so absolutely proud of my thyme and my rosemary. Rosemary we use all the time, but thyme has been really, really, really difficult for me to grow. I've tried growing it multiple times and usually it gets really, it, you know, it does dries so if it turns brown really quick. But this time it's beautiful. We cook with it all the time. You know, as a matter of fact, I probably have to turn it because we normally pick from this side. But you can see, look at how beautiful and green and healthy this is. Um, as you can see, it is, it, as you can see by looking, it's now fall in, in Florida. And fall, not meaning it's, it's a real fall, but... My mahogany tree is actually dropping its leaves, so the entire place looks like I'm living up north. When you look at the floor and these beautiful um, leaves, it looks like I'm living up north, but I'm actually in South Florida, but the mahogany tree sheds its leaves every April. Anyway, I don't want to digress. Let's, let's move on and see what else we have. My culantro has gone to seed. It has gone to seed, so I'm going to let these dry. You can see these are already dried up, so I'm going to replant my culantro. But this is also a very hardy plant to have. It's, it's almost completely dried up, but this, this lasted us for several months. It was really low maintenance. I stuck it. I actually, it actually popped up in my walkway. I saw it pop up in my walkway several months ago. I transplanted it here, and my family enjoyed it for several months. But now it's finally gone to seed, so I'll harvest those seeds and plant some more. Then here, I have my purple um, string beans. And you can see it has some kind of, um, like a leaf fungus. You see those white spots? So I probably need to treat it. You can look here and see that it's covered with blossoms. So I'm probably going to get a whole lot of string beans, but they haven't actually opened up yet. It's probably struggling, struggling because of this leaf fungus. I'm not sure. You experts on, on there can let me know. And then here is just some more of my mint. All right, so let's move on. I think we, we saw everything here on this side. Let's move on to the other side. 
so you guys can see it's a very small area it's probably like a two by maybe ten area you, you can see I have everything on here in pots but you can see the abundance that I got from that little area on this side we have our papaya that as you can see it's going back remember it fell over with with tropical storm Eta I propped it up I actually my husband actually had that nail um, propping it up the top is completely rotted off as, as my fact some lizards see lizard lizards living there now but the papaya tree is coming back the same thing happened to my brother's tree and he has all these branches coming out and they're all laden with papaya so I know that this is gonna bear again this was the sweetest papaya on earth so I, I have seeds from my brother's tree and I have I, I shared with so many folks that I'm gonna have seeds to, to plant some more back here we have a cocoa Cocoa is also known as malanga, right? And we planted a, I planted a couple of cocoa roots there. I actually had them in a pot, but they weren't doing well at all. I transplanted them there probably three or four months ago, and you can see how huge the leaves are now. That and so that means I have the cocoa or the malanga, which is a root vegetable. It's a root crop. It's growing in the ground. And right in front of it, I have a star fruit tree. So my star fruit tree was struggling for many years. I got very frustrated, I threatened it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't bear, so I chopped it down to the ground, and now it decided to come back. The leaves were always like a light yellow, but now it looks like it's actually gonna be healthy, so I'm gonna allow her to live. So I'll probably have star fruit pretty soon. And that is all I have for you today. I hope you had, you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe so that you can see the next video. Share this video with your friends so they can too can see how to plant, grow, and eat. Till next time, God bless. Stay safe.